Hey, Curtis. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, I believe this is the first time in your career that you're an, in your USC career that you're an underdog. Uh, just wanted to get your reaction to that. Um, the Vegas odds, they don't matter because I've been, like you just said, this is the first time, but I'm not undefeated, so odds don't mean nothing. Uh, what are your thoughts on uh, Tom Aspinall's rise? He's obviously climbed the ranks pretty fast. He's had a lot of finishes. Uh, what are your thoughts on him? Have you been impressed with Tom? Yeah, he's been very uh, impressive. He's not your standard uh, big, slow, plodding heavyweight. He throws combinations. He's athletic. He has a bounce. He's a respectable opponent, and a win over him is legitimate. It's not like some guys you beat – you know, like, I'm way, 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 way better than you. There's, you have no reason being in the octagon with me. He belongs in the octagon. He's, he's legit. And he's shown off his grappling a lot in his UFC career. Obviously, you're a very strong grappler yourself. What do you make of Tom's grappling? Uh, I think he has pretty good uh, grappling, especially for heavyweight. Majority of heavyweights don't have any grappling. So, uh, yeah, I think... He knows what he's doing on the ground, yeah. You had a great performance against uh, Chris Dawkins. How does it feel? You know, we all know you're uh, a very well-rounded fighter, but how does it feel when you get that knockout and you show off your hands? Um, it's always nice to have an early night because I don't think anyone wants to do an actual five, full five rounds. So that was good, but that wasn't my first knockout. I think that was the first one a lot of people seen. Because a lot of people probably don't watch my fights, but I've beaten people on the feet. I've I've gotten knockdowns against other people on the feet. So it wasn't really a huge shock to me. I'm sure it was to everyone else, though. And they're like, oh, he has hands. I already knew that. So You've kind of been uh, on the cusp of a title shot uh, for a while. Just certain results haven't gone your way. Where do you feel like a win over Tom puts you? Um... I'm gonna be honest, I went over Tom puts me waiting for the winner of Shogun and I think we all know that. Like that's why the UFC set up these fights. Like we knew this back in February when Tom fought, Tui Vasa fought, I fought, they were setting this up six months in advance. So yeah, I'll probably get the winner of that fight and then the winner of that fight will get a title shot, most likely. How do you see the fight between uh, Cyril Gann and uh, Tai Tuivasa playing out? I have no idea. Based off of Tuivasa's uh, performance against Derek Lewis, it takes a lot of punches to, to knock him out. He's got a, he's got a great uh, jaw or head or whatever. He doesn't get knocked out easily, so we'll have to see if Cyril Gann has knockout power. Uh, there's been talk about a potential interim title fight between John Jones and Stipe Miocic for a very long time now. Hasn't <laughs> materialized. I don't care about that. Like, I'm tired of talking. About, I don't want, this isn't shit. I don't want you guys to be like, oh, Blazers talking shit about John Jones. I don't care. I'm tired of hearing about someone who's not officially a heavyweight until he steps on the scale and it says 240, whatever. He's not a heavyweight. So I don't want to discuss it. Thank you. Okay, so obviously you're over here in England. I think a lot has been made of the crowd on Saturday night. Do you have any care in the world? I don't care. <laughs> I do, do they know? You should put this in your articles. We can't hear them. I don't know what the, they can call me a wanker or what. I I can't hear you, so I don't care at all. Okay. When you say, you know, you've only really been finished by insanely heavy hitters. Do you see? Do you think you can lose in other ways? Or do you think, oh, look, I just got hit by guys who can knock anyone out, and that's why I've lost? Or um, I mean, that is facts. That's how I've lost in the past. But I think anyone, if you don't go out there and perform your best, you can be outpointed or just out um, decisions. I've seen it happen to my homies. I've watched... One specific one that I watched, uh, Corey Sanhagen, when he fought TJ Dillashaw. Like, in my eyes, he won based off the damage, but if we're going by the j j j judge's scoring card, he was giving up his back too much, and he lost. So if you go out there and you make mental errors, you can lose. Thank you. Okay.
Curtis. Hi. Um, just looking back at the Chris Dorcas fight, I don't think you even attempted a takedown in that fight. You just went straight at him with the hands. Was that a conscious decision that you were going to go out and, and showcase your striking in that fight? Yes and no. Like, I made a conscious decision. I wasn't going to force the takedowns. Like, if he had just dropped his hands and gave me an easy takedown, yes, I'm going to take it. But he didn't give me the easy takedown, and I know I could have forced it, but I didn't want to force it. I wanted to get away from forcing anything. That was my issue in the Derrick Lewis fight. I beat him that whole first round, and then I forced a a takedown attempt early into the second round, and I paid the price. When you force things, they're easier to see, easier to counter. I wanted to be organic, so that's how I'm going to be for the rest of my my career. I learned a lesson in that Derrick Lewis fight. I I don't like to lose the same way over and over so I don't I'm not going to make that mistake again and be overly um, just not being patient and letting things happen organically do you think do you think Tom will give you an easy takedown in this fight or the opportunity for an easy takedown um, maybe not in the first two rounds that's why you have to you, you do have to strike. You you have to make it organic. The best takedowns happen within the exchanges. So one, two, three, slip, slip, one, and then shoot. Or one, fake the shot, throw some more, fake the shot, throw some more, and then go. You just got to – you can't be predictable because he's too good. Like, I think he's much better than Derek Lewis. I think I should have destroyed Derek Lewis, but I – I messed up, I effed up, and made a mental error. So I don't want to make any more of those or more mental errors. You mentioned that the Dorcas fight wasn't – it wasn't your first TKO finish, right? You've got a lot of them on your record. But do you think that that fight has earned you a lot more respect among among the fan base because of the way you approached it? Yeah, I I can tell people – everyone looks at me like, oh, he's got hands. I've always had these hands. Um, I've got knocked. I knocked down a dude in N- Nashville on my feet. A big, big uh, titty. Um, I, I know everyone. Everyone loves that one. Uh, I knocked down Olenek in New York. I've knocked down a lot of people. I, I knocked out Junior Dos Santos, and I was on the feet. And yeah, I attempted takedowns, but he he stuffed them all. So, I've won with my hands before. It's not a surprise to me, but that's one of the issues with MMA. Like, we don't have, like, it's not like the NFL, MLB, NHL. You have loyal, like, fans who, who they know all the stats. They can tell you for, like, f- football. They can tell you how many times their team passes on third and six. Like, fan fans. Majority of MMA fans are just here. Oh, this guy's big. This guy's big. I want to watch them just knock each other out. Those aren't real fans. Those are just people that want to see violence. When you're an MMA fan, you understand the sport. You actually follow the sport. You watch it. You remember stuff. We don't have a lot of those. Like that's why when I do meet real MMA fans, I'm the the energy I give them is a lot more positive than the energy I give to the casuals who just want to see blood. Last one from me. You've got the striking. You've got the wrestling. Which one's going to be the decisive skill set on Saturday night? I think you can't s- separate one from the other. Like the th- the th- thread of my wrestling. That's how I got the talk is knockout. Yeah. The reason his hand be able to sprawl so that opened up the knockout vice versa you could start thinking about my hands and then you forget about your hips and then i get to your hips so a little bit of both you know thanks very much curtis just one from me here um another american fan on the card hoping to cause an upset is jordan levitt he said that he's gonna twerk on the o2 arena after he wins do you have a similar plan if you beat aspinall <laughs> no i don't uh that's not my thing but more power to him if he does it. Uh, I'll be interested to see the reaction of uh, the crowd after that. Thank you.
Uh, Curtis, um, you know, Tom's never been into the third round. Do you think that has any disadvantages to him in the future? I can't speak for him, but for myself, the first time I went the full five rounds, that fifth round was it was different. There's it's it's hard to replicate the real fatigue of like real twenty minutes, and then that last five minutes. I could be doing this inspiring all the time, but the you know your partner's not looking to knock you out like that. That real f fear of like oh no. My arms are getting heavy. My legs are getting heavy. I've experienced that. I, I've been, I like to call it the dark place. That fifth round was the dark place. And I've been there and I came out on the other side. And the experience I came from that was, I can't even put a, a f figure on it. It's very, very important. So I can't say he needs it, but I needed it. Like, I have that experience. That's what I'm going to lean on. Him... If you get to the third, fourth, fifth rounds, I guess he'll learn. Is that something that you think you're going to aim to do, try and take him into those later rounds to see how he how he can cope with that? I mean, I always um, – I prepare for 25 minutes of of war. I expect every fight to be like my Volkov evoke, fight. I expect everyone. I, I know they're not – I expected it from – Caucus. I expected it from judging a road road truck. I expect it because it makes it easier. When I feel like it's easier to expect the worst than when you expect it to be all smooth and easy and oh I'm gonna get him out in the first round and then it doesn't happen. And your mind's like oh we didn't even think about going into the fourth fifth round. I've already thought about it and envisioned it. I'm big into visualization and I visualized that fifth round a lot so we'll see I never plan to get a f finish early but sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't we'll see and last one for me how do you compare Tom Aspinall to some of the other top heavyweights that you fought I think he probably has some of the least experience because I'm calling against a lot of old guys like Olin and Hunt, Alistair, Junior Dos Santos, these guys, they're, they're legends. They're all probably going to end up in the Hall of Fame. So I don't I don't think he has as much experience. But on the f flip side, he's younger, he's faster, more explosive. So there's pros and cons of every f uh, opponent I have. And I think he's, uh, in terms of pros, he's very fast, very explosive, athletic. He's young. It'll be a hard fight. Thank you. Hey, Curtis, right here. Oh, yeah, go for it. Um, d just wondering about your experience being around London. Um, have fans uh, treated you pretty well, or you're getting a hard time because you're fighting the local guy? No, no, no. Um, fans are always going to be. What fan, what n normal 5'9", 5'10", 160-pound dude is going to be like, hey, you fucking suck? <laughs> the even if they f feel that way, they're not going to say it. So I've never had any problems with anybody. No, they've all been really nice. You usually have a really awesome design going on for fight night. Uh, being, you know, away from home, are you going to try to have a barber freshen it up before the fight? Uh, I did that once in Australia because I was there for longer. I was there for 10 days and the designs, they started fading out. I don't... You gonna have to do that. Uh, I, I just got this last Friday night, so I think I'll be good. Yeah. Thanks, Curtis. I know you're a bit of a gamer. What video games are you currently playing? Uh, really, like the older I get, the less games I play. So it's it's slowly come down to just one game, and that's uh Madden. I just I play hours and hours of Madden. Are you playing any of the new Maddens, or are you kind of playing some of the classics? I know some of the hardcores don't love the changes in the Madden games. Um, I buy the new Madden every year. It's like a, a thing. I'm looking forward to buying the new one um, at the end of September. I've already ordered it, so I get it early. I'll, I'll get it in like three, no, like a month. A month from today, I should have it. Awesome. Thanks, man.